So here's a simple um, explanation of, of how PC boards are built. You first start with some raw material, which is usually copper on the top, copper on the bottom, and some type of material in between, usually um, fiberglass. Sometimes you'll hear the word called FR4. Uh, FR, I think, just st stands for fiberglass, <laughs> and 4 is just like the fourth revision of a particular chemical. Anyway, there's different types of things that you can put on the inside. But for simplicity, it's just copper on the top, copper on the bottom, and something in between. So the first thing you want to do in order to build a PC board is to locate where all of your holes are going to be, okay? And so there's something called a drill drawing. We'll get to that later when we talk about Gerber files and stuff. But there's a drill drawing that says where to drill all the holes. And they give that uh, file to a robot, and the robot picks up the right size drills, and it drills all of the holes. So now you have a board with a whole bunch of holes in it. Now you want to create what are called traces. Those are the little things that connect one part to another part and not shorting everything out. And the way that you do that is uh, you etch away the copper where you don't want it. Back in the old days, you would use like a um, magic marker and you'd put a black line where you want the copper to stay. And then when there, where there wasn't a black marker, you put chemicals and that chemical etched away all the copper. And then you could just wash away the ink, the black ink from the marker. And you end up, end up with something like this. So you basically end up with a bunch of traces and holes. But modern PC boards are able to connect the top of the board to the bottom of the board. In the old vintage equipment, you might find PC boards that don't have that ability. That wasn't invented yet, or it was just too expensive. It cost money to do what are called plated through vias. The holes that connect one side of the board to the other are called vias. Uh, they give you a, a, a vehicle to go from one side to the other. So these uh, holes can be filled in with a plating process. And I show that here. So uh, what we want to do, now that we have a bunch of holes, we want to plate those holes. And we put them in some type of chemical bath, and we're able to plate metal inside of those holes. So now we have a way to connect the top and the bottom. So now at this point, we have a bunch, uh, we have a usable PC board. Uh, we have copper on the bottom, we have copper on the top, we have vias in between. It, it's everything we need to have for a PC board. And in fact, you will see a lot of PC boards that just stop at this point. Um, sometimes you don't like bare copper and bare copper can oxidize. You might see old PC boards, especially ones that are hand-built or home-built. Um, they will oxidize over time, and it's nice to coat them with sub, some, plate, plate them with some type of other metal that protects them from, from oxidizing. You might also want to plate them with uh, something like gold and increase the conductivity, or the uh, in RF designs, you, you, you're working on the thin film of the metal and you want the very last layer of metal to be very conductive and so gold is very good for that so sometimes you'll get a gold plated board and so this just shows where, wherever there's red it went through another chemical bath and got coated with something maybe it was nickel maybe it was gold maybe it was something else but it got coated so that's a possibility so once you get the board at this stage, you can go a next step and you can apply just some type of plastic material that is what's called a solder mask. It just coats the board so that solder won't bridge between one connection and another. And you only expose the pieces of the PC board that you would like solder to stick to. That's called a solder mask. And so the green here uh, shows a solder mask. Now, if you remember the step where we plated the traces, we had to plate the entire board. And if you're plating an entire board with gold, that can get expensive. So often what they do is they put the solder mask down first, and then they plate the board. So you don't use as much gold. You only coat the places that aren't protected by something else. Remember, we might have coated those traces to protect them from the elements. Well, the solder mask can do that same job. So we only plate the, the uh, contacts that are still exposed to air. 
So there might be another thing that we want to have on top of this green layer, this solder mask, and that's what's called a silk screen. And that's just white ink or, you know, it's just like ink jetted on top and it's putting letters and little symbols and stuff just tells you the values of things or the component locations, or um, you could put MSI guy copyright 2023 on top or whatever you want to write. You can just put that on a silk screen. Um, when you go order a PC board, I know a lot of people are scared to build their first PC board because they get to a, this page and it's just overwhelming and they, they don't, they don't know what all the th things are. They just don't know how to order a PC board. So, um, I'll go over the things I've just discussed. So what did we discuss? Well, we discussed that we had two layers. We had remember copper on the bottom, copper on the, on the top, and then something in between, well, that, that's a two-layer board. If you only have one layer of copper on one side, that's a one-layer board. We'll get to four four and multiple layers later because they're, 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 they're different. So we'll just talk about a two-layer board. Then you choose the material. So there's FR4. Um, some of the LEDs that you get are on PC boards and they need a good heat sink. And so instead of fiberglass in the middle, they actually have aluminum in, in the middle and, and you can choose that. You can choose some fancy material that has really good dielectric materials called Rogers materials. Um, and there are some other things I won't talk about, but ours is just FR4. And then there's some actually selections on FR4, which I've never bothered to check any of those boxes. Um, but I think they have to do... <sighs> what do they have to do? I really don't know. <laughs> so um, I probably should for this video, but I don't know what they are. I just, I just leave the default. And it's fine. It's just FR4. Then the next thing is, remember we had copper, copper, and something in between. Well, how thick is the thing in between, right? And so you get to choose that. You can have a real thin PC board. This one's 0.2 millimeters thick. And this The thickest one is like 3.2 millimeters thick. But the default is 1.6, which is equivalent to 62 mils. Um, and there's a range that you can choose. So you can have a one PC, one millimeter PC board, 1.6 millimeter PC board, two millimeter PC board. So um, there are standard sizes that don't cost you anything extra. So you can play with this. You can try one, calculate the price, try one, try calculate the price. It, it'll tell you whether you're racking up more money than you want to. But in general, I think the one, 1 1.2, 1 1.6, I think those are all standard pricing. You don't need to pay anything extra for those. It, thicker ones will cost you more and thinner ones will cost you more. Uh, I'm not going to talk about these yet. We talked about the solder mask being green. Well, it doesn't have to be green. Uh, it can be uh, uh, it can be red, it could be yellow, it could be blue. You can make your PC board any, any color you want, uh, which is kind of nice. I've made all of these, I think, in different videos. I've showed you those. The silk screen, like this, this inkjet printing on top of this uh, solder mask, you could have it white, you could have it black. You don't have to have any at all if you don't want. Um, so that's what this uh, what this selection is here. We'll, we'll ignore that for now. And remember I told you that copper oxidizes, so you want to coat it with something. And the cheapest thing to coat it with is, is solder. You just put solder on it, and then the solder protects it from oxidizing. And so hassle is hot air solder leveled with lead. So this is lead solder. And what they do is they, 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 they dunk the PC board in lead solder, and then they take an industrial uh, hairdryer and they, 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 they blow it so that it levels off, it kind of blows off all of the uh, metal and it, it, it levels it as much as air can level it, right? It's not a perfect leveling, but it, it, it's not too bad. And they use this jet of hot air um, to level the level the uh, plating that they've just put on. You could choose, if you don't like lead, you could, you could tell it to use lead-free solder. Um, I talked about coating boards with gold. Uh, there's two ways to do that. You can have an immersion gold, which is like a, a, a chemical process. Hard gold, I believe, is sputtered on, if I'm, if I'm not, uh, if I'm correct. Um, and so uh, they all have different costs. So putting gold on boards, of course, is expensive. 
All right. Um, let's see here. You can you can choose the thickness of the gold. One micron, two microns, three microns. You're going to pay more money for three microns, right? Uh, hard gold. It's going to be a. Uh, they're going to coat it with nickel first, and then they're going to put gold on top of that. So it's a real fancy process. Um, immersion silver. You can have it silver coated. I've never had a board silver coated. That might be cool to do someday. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, so we'll just keep it with hotter leveled. That's the cheap one. Um, let's see here. Tenting vias plugged with, um, yeah, we'll, we'll ignore that right now. Um, well, we, I guess we can talk about it. Um, you could, the, the connection that goes from the top to the bottom, you're not going to solder a wire there. So you, you can have this green solder mask over the top of it. And that's called tenting a via. It's just, it's just put over the top. It's like having a tent on, on top of the via. Um, you can have the solder mask like fill the holes, like have a really thick solder mask that kind of goes into the holes and all plugs them up. And that's this one here, plugged, plugged vias with solder mask. Um, or if you want to leave your vias open, sometimes that's nice for debugging. You can go use your oscilloscope probe and probe the vias. You can tell it, yeah, don't cover up the vias. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna go use those for, um, so those are those uh, choices. Now, remember we have copper on the top, copper on the bottom, stuff in the between. Well, how thick is the copper on the top? How thick is the copper on the bottom? And they have a way of, of uh, specifying that in how many ounces of copper for a particular size board. So one ounce copper is typical, and you, know, you can get really, really thick coppers. So if you're going to build a like, let's say you're going to build a stereo that's a thousand watts of power and you need really high currents um, or the final amplifier in a, in a radio, you're going to want real thick copper. And so you can choose that here. Of course, it costs you extra money. Um, so there you go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to relate things like things I show you with what what you have to do when you go order PC boards or what you have to do when you go design PC boards. Um, and so these are just some of the things that you'll 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 need to know. Mm -hmm.